This is Ham College, Episode 78, for June 30th, 2021. Ham College is brought to you by ICOM. ICOM has the base station of your dreams with the IC7300 and IC9700 SDR transceivers and the portable IC705. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to an extra exciting episode of Ham College Tonight. I'm Professor Thomas. And I'm Dean Martin. What did we talk about on the last show? Well, to the best of my recollection, we talked about some test gear. I do remember talking about oscilloscopes and spectrum analyzers. Analog and and digital instruments? Yeah, something like that. Antenna analyzers? Yeah, we did talk about antenna analysis. What about RF measurements? Yeah, we did. That's a good thing to talk about, too, considering the topic of this show. And computer-aided measurements, and I think that's all of them. So we we didn't get finished. Yeah, but what, you mean, but wait, there's more? I mean, wait, there's more. This month, we're going to talk about measurement techniques and limitations, instrument accuracy and performance limitations, probes, Techniques to minimize errors, measurement of Q, instrument calibration, S parameters, and vector network analyzers. Oh, wait, man. I think I'm not feeling well. I'm going to call in sick. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I think there's going to be some buzzer action tonight. These are getting a little tougher. Yeah. Uh, Last week, pretty smooth sailing. I don't think we had any buzzers last week. No, we didn't. It was actually pretty easy, but I think we're going to make up for it this time. I mean, last month. I always do that. It just seems like a week. And you can see I've got the trusty Simpson 260 out here. And the not-so-trusty digital yeah. multimeter. Radio Shack digital multimeter. I paid $5 for that meter. What do you if mean? If this is trusty, what, is this the not-trusty one? Uh, I trust it so far. Huh. But I don't know. Radio Shack closed them out. Well, they were closing out the store, actually, so... I was glad to pick it up for $5, and it does seem to be accurate uh, compared to my fluke. So, Is it a fluke um, that it's accurate? Uh, apparently not, because I checked all my digital meters, and they all measured very, very close to the cool. fluke, which surprised me. Well, let's get on into tonight's questions. Before we do that, though, there's something that's going on every time we're doing a show live. Tonight, there was a lot of extra stuff going on, but I think you're referring to the chat, amateurlogic.tv forward slash chat. If we've got a live stream going, there's a chat room going on at the same time. There's a lot of fun in there. People are trying to answer along with us as we're reading the questions off and going through the answers. Um, Anyway, join us over there and participate. Yep. If you're not in the chat room and you're watching the live stream, you're missing half the fun. I'm just going to leave it at that. Just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> they, know the, they know the rest of it. Yeah. Okay, first question up tonight. Let's do the coin toss and decide who's, who's going to read the first one. Okay. Uh, you can read. I'll read the first one. It don't matter. Okay, well. Which of the following factors most affects the accuracy of a frequency counter? A, input attenuation accuracy. B, time-based accuracy. C, decade divider accuracy. Or D, temperature coefficient of the logic. I should have, I should have read or answered first because that's when I might have a, have a chance at. Yeah, you, you might. Uh, which of the following factors most affects the accuracy of a frequency counter? It's not going to be the input attenuator accuracy. You know, that's not measuring the frequency. That's just uh, how much signal you're putting into it. 
temperature coefficient of the logic. I'm not sure if there is such a thing. I mean, logic's either a one or a zero. Decade divider accuracy. I mean, that's that's kind of like a digital thing too. I mean, it's either dividing in decades or it's not. I mean, it's not like it gets off from 10 and maybe changes to a 9.5 or something. Mm-hmm. But time-based accuracy, I think that's going to be the answer. I would concur with that one. And that's a good concurrence. <laughs> Here, let's go ahead and do this. Okay. All right. We need to celebrate the little victories tonight because there might not be many of them. True. Well, I don't know. They're not going to be that bad. Uh, yeah. I, I glanced at the know. questions, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be that bad, yeah. some of them. At least a few of them will. Yeah. There's an oscillator in a frequency counter, and you adjust that oscillator to match a known frequency source uh, like WWV or uh, some other standard. And then everything that the counter does all depends on the accuracy of that time base because the rest of it is, is pretty much just digital, you know. I got one for you. Okay. Oh, you had to give me one, a long one there. Well, no, it's a short question, but you got lots of answers. What is the significance of voltmeter sensitivity expressed in ohms per volt? The full scale reading, A, let me say, the full scale reading of the voltmeter multiplied by its ohms per volt rating will indicate the input impedance of the meter. Or B, when used as a galv- galvan meter, that's probably way wrong. The reading in volts multiplied by the ohms per volt rating will determine the power drawn by the device under test. C. When used as an ohm meter, the reading in ohms divided by the ohms per volt rating will determine the voltage applied to the circuit. Or D. When used as an ammeter, the full scale reading in amps divided by ohms per volt rating will determine the size of shunt needed. All right, I'm going to have to read this one because I don't really don't fully understand at this point. What is the significance of voltmeter sensitivity expressed in ohms per volt? The significance. I'm just going to guess, say, I honestly don't know. You got the buzzer ready? No, because you were right. So well, I got I'll, lucky. I'll I got one. lucky then. There was a lot of ciphering going on there. So I think you knew what the answer was. Uh, no, I know what the other one. I think I knew what the other ones weren't. Will you want me to do some splaining? Yeah, that'd be good. That's why I happen to have this right here, the trusty Simpson 260. If you look down here at the bottom of the scale on this and most other analog voltometers, meters, you'll see something like that. Now, yours may not have a yellow circle around it like I've added to this one. But that's the uh, volt ohms of the milliamp meter right there. 20,000 ohms per volt. And that's pretty typical of these Simpson meters. I think they're all that. That's for volts DC. For AC, it's 5,000 ohms volt. That determines the impedance of that meter. If we take the probes of that meter, connect them to a circuit, that's going to be like we took a 20,000 ohm resistor and and put across that circuit. Mm-hmm. A lot of circuits, that's going to affect the performance of them. They're not going to act the same. Yeah. So that's why it's good to know what the ohms per volt is of that meter. And the reason I pulled out this Radio Shock one here is because my Fluke is in my toolbox, and I didn't want to take it out in case I had to go to the transmitter and show up and I didn't have a Fluke. That would be a fluke. That would be a fluke. But that's a that's that Radio Shock voltmeter. Yeah, I remember when you got this. That was one of their better ones. This uh, actually looks a lot like the uh, similar to the one that I got from uh, MCM Tenma, Tenma or whatever. Tenma. They yeah. may have one that 
similar to that. Anyway, what's the ohms per volt on that one? Does it say somewhere? No, it doesn't. Then, then I don't know. That's why I'm fortunate here to have the owner's manual for this one. Since you're the owner? And I say fortunate to have it because I couldn't find the owner's manual online for it. But when I bought it, it everything was in the package. This one, let's see, I just saw it on here last night. Input impedance, whether it's DC or AC, it's 10 megohms. That's not going to affect the circuit nearly as much as 20,000 ohms. Uh-huh. So your digital meter is going to be better for working on solid-state circuits and, and circuits with high gain and high impedances. If you go connecting your Simpson across it, it, the circuit may still work, but then again, it may not, and the reading you're getting is, is different. So a high impedance meter, like a digital voltometer, meter, is, is better in that circumstance. Used to, well, actually, when I went to school, we didn't really have digital meters. There may have been some around, but we didn't have any. Oh, yeah? Uh, what they used, well, it was an FET voltometer meter when I went to school. But before that, it was a vacuum tube voltmeter, and you'll still see those around. So it's got like a high impedance um, input to it, like a vacuum tube is a real high impedance input, and so is a, an FET. And they use those amplifiers in the front end you of it. You didn't use the back of your hand? As soon as um, you saw it? I, I usually use my fingers <laughs> like this, yeah, and that's, that's not the way you do it. Uh, but anyway, so that's why that's important. Which S parameter is equivalent to forward gain? A, S11. B, S12. C, S21. Um, D, S22. Now, how are, you, how are you supposed to know that? There's got to be a graphic that goes along with this. No, there, it didn't come with a graphic. So that, that makes it kind of difficult, doesn't it? It does, because I have, I have no idea. S parameters are something that we probably, you don't run into very much. Uh, well, I say you don't. Some people do all the time, but as amateurs, we don't, most of us never deal with that. Where you might see it is if you're looking at antenna analyzers, you may notice them mentioning something about um, being able to measure S parameters with it. So I'm just going to say the answer is going to be C, S, 21. What is the chat room saying on that one? The few who answered said it's a C. You know, that's a uh, okay, so tell me why it's C. I, I really don't, honestly don't have a clue. I would have just guessed at this one. I would have probably guessed, uh, I don't even know what I would have guessed. Probably the first one up there. Well, let's see if it is a C. It is. Okay. Okay. First, what an S parameter is, that's a scatter parameter. Okay. Oh, it's clear I, I did I did look that much up, but I, I didn't go very deep into it because I normally don't I try to not really like do that mm -hmm. so much to make the show more interesting and see if you can if you can pass the thing. Well, I actually have a, a little splain in here on that. Good timing. Well, I don't know if it is or not. Depends on your perspective, because the next question is going to be on this too. And if I if I do the splaining now, you're going to know. Probably the still not going to get it. Well, you want to go ahead and do the question, then I do the splaining, or, uh, or you want well, to suit yourself? First? It doesn't really matter to me. I'm probably going to miss it. Whatever. I don't go know. ahead. I'll just guess it. Okay. Well, let's see. Which S parameter represents input port return loss or reflection coefficient, uh, which is equivalent to VSWR? Is it A, S11, B, S12, C, S21, or D, S22? 
Which OS parameter represents input port return loss or reflection coefficient equivalent to VSWR? Well, everybody knows that's S11. A. S11. Wait a minute. Why are you saying that? Because I really don't have a clue, and that's the first one that sounded pretty good. Okay. That's that's my reasoning behind it. I don't, I don't know the answer. I have no idea. Well, I could roll if I had a four-sided dice and roll one. I could have been just as lucky like that. <laughs> Let's see. I really. Don't. Oh, you got to be kidding me! It was no. the first answer. Remember a while ago, I said I'd probably pick the first answer. Yeah. Uh, I'll pick the first answer. Well, I'm going to buy a lottery ticket, man. I'll be back in a little bit after you get this <laughs> internet stuff straightened out. Then I'll here. Pick me up one too. too. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. So what are as as parameters? I'm not going to go into a whole long diatribe on it. I'm just going to give you what you need to know. To apparently, so, I don't even need to know. Apparently not. It's scattering parameters. That's what S parameters means. And S parameters describe the response of an in-port network to signals incident to any and all of the ports. That means however many ports you got on the, the network that you're analyzing. The first number of the subscript refers to the responding port, while the second number refers to the incident port. So S21 means that the response at port 2 due to a signal at port 1. The most common endpoint networks are one or two port networks. Three port S parameters are easy to model with software, but three port S parameter measurements are extremely difficult to perform with accuracy. So to kind of Round that up, you can see there's only going to be two numbers after the S there. Mm -hmm. The first number is a responding port. That means that's where we're taking the measurement. The second number means where the signal is put in. So we're putting in a signal on port one, which would be like, say, this end of the transmission line. Okay. And then we're measuring it back at this end of the transmission line which would be the reflected power coming back. Okay. So you got uh, VSWR there. In the other question just a moment ago, let me back up and, and find that one. Right here, S21 is equivalent to forward gain. What that means is the two means that we're measuring at port number two, so that's not at the input of the transmission line. We're measuring at the output of the transmission line, and we're putting a signal in at the input, port one at, at the, the input. So we're seeing we put a signal in here, and we get this amount out here. Okay. So that's that's the gain. That's a very strange way to to uh, denote something like that. It's kind of, it seems backwards, doesn't it? Uh huh. Well, you ought to see all the math that went with it. No, thank you. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll just keep guessing. That's how I felt about it. Well, if you can remember that right there, right, you should be able to make out okay with it. Maybe. What three test loads are used to calibrate an RF vector network analyzer? A, 50 ohms, 75 ohms, and 90 ohms. B, short circuit, open circuit, and 50 ohms. C, short circuit, open circuit, and resonant circuit. RD, 50 ohms through one-eighth wavelength, one-quarter wavelength, and one-half wavelength of coaxial cable. I might actually have a chance at this one, too. You think? Possibly. What three test loads are used to calibrate an RF vector network analyzer? All right. Three different loads we put out there. So if we're going to calibrate that instrument before we start, 
three different possible loads there. I'm, I know what the answer is. I'll just see if you want to. I'm pretty sure it's B. Short circuit, open circuit, and then 50 ohm load. Well, you're right. The ones who are answering are saying it's B. Well, let's see if we're right. And we're right. Yep. That one wasn't too hard. No. The S the S parameter stuff, I just did not yeah. have a clue about that. So what you're doing with this one, and I've I've done it before and I've seen it done before, is they actually make a calibrated short circuit. Mm-hmm. That you can get a connector and it's a calibrated short on it. And you take your instrument and you stick that short on there and you calibrate it to measure exactly zero ohms. This is on a real high precision instrument. And then you take it off and see if it goes infinite. And then you put on a 50 ohm load that's highly calibrated and you see if you got 50 ohms there calibrated for that and that way you know absolutely that what you're going to measure is you're going to get a good measurement on it otherwise your test equipment might not be just right and you're not going to see this on your swr meter you might see it on some antenna analyzers yeah, you're going to see yeah, it on right. those little mini VNAs that everybody's getting. They have that. Yeah, yeah. You, you're supposed to calibrate it, and I'll be honest with you, I saw something about that. That's actually how I knew about that. Yeah. Um, for reading on those, because I actually thought about getting one of them. How much power is being absorbed by a load when a directional power meter connected between the transmitter and a terminating load reads 100 watts forward power and 25 watts reflected power. Is it A, 100 watts? B, 125 watts. C, 25 watts. Or D, 75 watts. How much power is being absorbed by the load when a directional power meter connected between the transmitter and a terminating load reads 100 watts forward? 25 watts reflected. D. That means there's 75 watts getting to the antenna. Okay. I'm going to D. agree with you. And the few in the chat room who are giving the answer say it's D. And it is 75 watts. Question sounds a little, a little odd to me, although... The question is the question. Well, being absorbed by the load seems kind of a strange way to absorbed. Put it. But I've yeah. I've seen it put like that before. Yeah. It may, actually, it may have been on my test before. I don't know, but I do remember reading it like that. I guess it seems strange to me because you would think, well, if it's being absorbed, it's lost. Well, if it was a dummy load, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if it's an antenna, though, it's radiating. So absorbed just seems a little odd, but uh -huh. that is that it's is worded very answer. tricky. Yeah, I think it's about time we take Let's go for the snack bar. A short break. Go for the air conditioning. It's that time of year again. Field day is June 26th to June 27th. ICOM has the base station of your dreams with the IC7300 and 9700 SDR transceivers and the portable SDR transceiver, the IC705. Be a field day leader with ICOM. ICOM's IC7300 is a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed your expectations. This innovative HF transceiver digitizes RF before various stages to reduce the generated inherent noise in different IF stages. The IC7300 is the radio that changed the way entry-level HF is designed. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. Create your own band opening with the IC9700. Bring direct sampling to the UHF-VHF weak signal world. 
This all-mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features that are sure to keep you busy. 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time high-speed spectrum scope, and waterfall display. Smooth satellite operation with 99 satellite channels. Dual watch operation and full duplex operation in satellite mode. Expect top performance on field day with ICOM's IC9700. IC705 is the perfect transceiver for hams who enjoy what both the great indoors and outdoors offer. Features and functionality at the tips of your fingers in a portable package covering HF, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters, and weight is just under 2 pounds. See the IC705 webpage to view accessories and free software available for download. For more information on all these great field day choices, visit icomamerica.com slash amateur. And you don't want to miss episode three of Amateur Logic. You must have had to get your box of floppy disks out to find that old footage. I almost did. I, I've got, and it's not many. There were only a few promos that we did before we posted a show. It was, it may have only been four, maybe yeah. five. Yeah. That was pretty cool to see that old stuff like that. It is. It is. So that was... That was our most watched video ever, I think. Episode three. Episode three. Cantinas were really hot. Oh at yeah. That point. Uh, was, war driving. Yep. All that stuff. Yeah. Wi-Fi sniffers. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was that was crazy times. So that's back when hardly anybody had Wi-Fi, so everybody was trying to like scarf free Wi-Fi from somewhere. What do you say we give away something? Okay. What could we give away? The shirt. This shirt. The shirt you're wearing. Yeah. What if you know? I feel like I need. I need more than that. Okay. Can I have a hat too? I just so happen to have one right here where I found the shirt I put on earlier. <laughs> <laughs> actually, if you win, I'll let you have the clean one. Yeah. Or actually, you take this one. I'll take the clean one home so I don't have to wash before the next. <laughs> or what do we what do you say we just get Jesse at ICOM to send him one of those and a hat and maybe whatever else he can stuff in the box well, that's a good idea get one of these cool ham crew t-shirts it's got the same thing on the front as you do have on the back so you would look as good when you leave the ham fest as you did when you got there yep pretty cool and so, if you'd like to win that, all you need to do is send an email to hamcollege at amateurlogic.tv. And we'll draw a random number each time amongst the entries. And that person's going to win. And we just happened to have done so this time around. It so happened. Yep. And he didn't give us really a message in there. We say you can, all you got to have is a name and an email address. And so we got that from him. That's actually all he sent. Good enough. Good enough. Timothy Willoughby 
K-O-4-I-V-N. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Timothy. You'll be receiving a care package courtesy of ICOM very soon. There's a four call. Maybe I'll see you at uh, Huntsville wearing the uh, ICOM ham crew t-shirt around there. Possibly so. I don't know where he's from, but he's a four, so he can't be that far off. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Congratulations. If you didn't get picked or if you, your name wasn't drawn or your call sign wasn't drawn, um, the list gets cleared out. So if you entered and you want to enter for next month to have a chance to win, go ahead and send in your entry now. Ham College at AmateurLogic.tv. And uh, good luck to you. You know, the free part there, I think that caught email's attention over in the chat room. You know that cheap fella. Yeah, I know that cheap fella. Yeah, he's uh, he's looking at your purple and gold shirt there. Oh, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, that is a nice shirt, isn't it? Tommy would like to have. Well, he's got one of these. I've got one. I have to be careful who I wear it in front of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, football rivalry there. Huh? Yeah. Okay, well, let's get on into the next question. And, well, I guess this was one you're going to ask me. Oh, all right. What do the subscripts of the S parameters represent? A, the port or ports at which measurements are made. B, the relative time between measurements. C, relative quality of the data. Or D, frequency order of the measurements. Well, heck, I know the answer now. Yeah. What do the subscripts of S parameters represent? You know, this this does seem kind of familiar to me. Now especially. Yeah, I guess it does. And Seems familiar to me too. Been over all the answers there, so Go ahead and spit it out, man. Go ahead and speed it out. It is A the port or ports at which measurements are made. And the chat room, they're saying A. Yeah. It is A. All right, you nailed that. All right. Well, I'm going to throw another one at you here. Uh Uh-oh. I think you'll get it. Which of the following can be used to measure the Q of a series tuned circuit? A, the inductance to capacitance ratio. B, the frequency shift. C, the bandwidth of the circuit's frequency response. Or D, the resonant frequency of the circuit. Measure the Q of a series tuned circuit. I'm pretty sure it's C. Okay, well, that's the answer that we're seeing in the chat room. I'll agree with you, it's C. And the Q, you're right, that's the quality of the circuit. Uh, The other ones didn't really make a lot of sense to me. And you would think, well, quality, you'd always want the most quality. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not, um, that depends on, on the application as to what kind of Q you'd want. For an antenna, it's going to be most efficient if it's got a high Q, it's going to radiate better. However, it's not going to be as broad. So when you're tuning, you're going to have to get you know right on the money there if it's a super high Q antenna. Yeah. This says for a series tuned circuit, though. Same difference. Um, but yeah, series tuned. I mean, you got Q on either one. What is indicated if the current reading on an RF ammeter placed in series with the antenna feed line of a transmitter increases as the transmitter is tuned to resonance? A. There's possibly a short to ground in the feed line. B. The transmitter is not properly neutralized. C. There is an impedance mismatch between the antenna and feed line. Or D. There is more power going into the antenna. Well, I got to read that question again because 
I wasn't really paying attention. I was looking at the chat room. <laughs> they were talking about something else. So what is indicated if the current reading of an RF ammeter placed in series with the antenna feed line of a transmitter increases as a transmitter is tuned to resonance? Um, there is probably a short to ground, no. The transmitter is not properly neutralized. Yeah, that's a pretty easy one. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't be that. C, there is an impedance mismatch between the antenna and the feed line. No, if the ammeter is, is peaking out or is at maximum, you're transferring the most power. So I'm going to say it's D, there is more power going into the antenna. Mm -hmm. Chat room, yeah. They're, they're saying it's D. Nailed it. And it is. And they make RF ammeters for ham radio use. I, I know, I believe MFJ sells them. Probably some other folks too. But they're real common in AM broadcasting. They have a RF ammeter right at the base of the tower. Okay. And when I say that, you got your transmission line that goes out to the tower, then you got your tuning network, then you got the ammeter, and there's the tower. So it's it's like right there. After all the tuning and everything, they want you, FCC wants you to measure how much current is going into the antenna. Which of the following methods measures intermodulation distortion in an SSB transmitter? Is it A? Modulate the transmitter using two RF signals having non-harmonically related frequencies and observe the RF output with a spectrum analyzer. Oof. B. Modulate the transmitter using two AF signals having non-harmonically related frequencies and observe the RF output with a spectrum analyzer. C. Modulate the transmitter using two AF signals having harmonically related frequencies and observe the RF output with a peak reading wattmeter. Or D. Modulate the transmitter using two RF signals having harmonically related frequencies and observe the RF output with a logic analyzer. Okay. I'm thinking it's not D. I'll I'll agree. It's, I don't think it's D. The logic analyzer thing is yeah. ruling that one out. So okay, I'm gonna have to read this carefully here. I think it's B. I'm probably totally wrong in my figuring on that. But it's either A or B. I know it's not C or D, and I'm pretty sure it's B because without any audio on sideband, you got nothing. True. Now I'll see agree. if I'm right or not. It's B. Okay. And you don't modulate a transmitter with RF. No. Unless you got real bad RFI getting into your microphone or whatever mm -hmm. your audio is. So, yeah. As a matter of fact, I have a little circuit board from a kit over here I built. Uh-huh. And it's got two frequencies on it, and they're they're not harmonically related to each other. And if you put that into a sideband transmitter, look at it on a spectrum analyzer. Oh. It's, you know, if it's got bad intermodulation distortion, you're going to see. That would actually be a crap. cool amateur logic segment. Yeah, I guess I could do that sometime. That would be pretty interesting. I'd like to see that. Okay. If I can remember. I'll remember you. Okay. There you go. I appreciate that. Which of the following can be measured with a vector network analyzer? A, input impedance. B, output impedance. C, reflection coefficient. Or D, all these choices are correct. Which can be measured with a vector network analyzer? Could you measure input impedance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you measure output impedance? Yeah. Could you measure reflection coefficient? Which, you know, you can kind of think of that as reflected power or VSWR. And yeah. 
So it's got to be D. All of these choices are correct. Yeah, well, I'm not sure what they're calling reflection coefficient, but A and B, I'm sure, are right. So it's got to be C has to be right, too, just based off of that there's a D in there. Yeah, we don't use that term a lot. You know, we normally say reflected power or, or VSWR, but reflection coefficient is another measurement of that. So it is C. No, it's D, excuse me, uh, all these choices. I was looking for the buzzer button, man. I'm I'm glad I caught that. You're just a little bit quicker. All of these choices. Cool. Okay, well, you know what? Are we at the end? I think we are at the end. There's no no way. We made it through here without a buzzer. We I, did. I knew for sure there was going to be some buzzer action tonight. I would have bet almost anything on it. You just weren't trying hard enough, or we could have had some. I just got lucky on that guess, <laughs> because the one about the S parameter, that was merely a guess, I promise you. That was a good guess. Because, I, like I said on the one before, I said, well, I said, well, if it was me, I'd probably pick the first answer. And so when it came back to the next one, just like that, I did what I said, and I picked the first answer. Yep. Hey, are you going to do that ham radio thing this year? What the? The one with the bulldozer tearing everything up. Oh, the portable operations cab. Yes, I am. Is it safe with all the big guns and everything? Well, it was only little pistols last year, but the big guns have been challenged. They've done it again. The steering committee has continued to level the playing field. This year, there are three separate time periods for worldwide propagation and a new date. See foxmicotel.com stroke challenge. Will you take the challenge? Interesting. Will you take the challenge? I don't know, maybe. I'm going to have to go there and read up on it and see. Yep. Okay. Just might. You never know. It could happen. Well, I didn't even look to see what's going to be on the questions next time around, but I think we're probably, probably finished. probably best just not to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your reasoning there, yeah. Chat room did good tonight as well. Yeah, the ones that answered. I think some of them might have had some trouble because there was only like three and four answers this time in there. Normally, there are a lot of them. Yeah. So some of them might have had a little trouble too, which is totally understandable. Some of them were pretty tough questions. Yeah, true. Lady Luck's got to be on your side. <laughs> I'm going to stop by and buy those lottery tickets on the way home, like I said. Well, when you pull out of here, you should probably just head on over to Vicksburg to the casinos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take all my savings out of the bank, head on over there. Yeah, just get it out of the way. <laughs> These weren't bad for me. I knew most of this stuff. Yeah. The S parameters, I had to go do a, just a little research because. Well, it makes sense now, you know, now that you understand it. But but uh, just if somebody was just to look at that, then you, yeah. you wouldn't have a clue, which is. The state I was in before I got here. Oh yeah, but before I knew what the answer was, I I wouldn't have known. <laughs> That's a very profound statement. Yeah. You mind if I quote that? F feel free. <laughs> <laughs> feel free. <laughs> we might get some T-shirts printed up with that. I shouldn't have said that. Mike will take us seriously. <laughs> Oh, maybe I need to put those in the swag shop and for Ham College. Speaking of that, just a happy coincidence, although they don't have one that says that on it. Not yet. If you, well, true. If if you did need a T-shirt, because, I mean, let's face it, who doesn't? Where could you find one? You could find one here. You could find some really good ones here, actually. Shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash amateur logic. You can get T-shirts, but you can also get uh, mugs, like the cool mug you've been drinking your tea out of here. Um, golf shirts, hoodies. It's a little bit warm for a hoodie right now, but it's not going to last forever. Um, there's backpacks on there, all kind of cool things. So go check it out, shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash amateur logic. Are we going to live stream field day? Nope. Probably not. 
Um, it's going to be kind of a weird field day this year. I've got some, uh, we weren't able to really, we're not going to be really able to go and set up and camp like we normally do. Not to mention it's been raining like every day. It's, it storms every single day. And, uh, but also I've had, my wife's had some health things going on, so I'm not going to go and spend the night. I don't feel too good doing that. Yeah. So um, it's going to be kind of a weird field day, but we're going to definitely going to do something. So yeah. there'll be some field, field day footage next, uh, amateur logic. Yeah. I've got. Uh, event I've got to attend tomorrow. Well, I don't. I don't absolutely have to. Well, I field don't day's an event too. Well, it is. But a uh, friend of mine's having a retirement party. I, I won't really want to go to. And so I'll I'll be going that tomorrow afternoon. I might work some field day though sometime over the weekend. From here. It would probably be yeah because I don't. What is that? One Delta. Be- I think, I believe so. That's how far in advance I've planned this. I haven't looked at the rules. <laughs> uh, but actually, Wayne is camping out. I'll be, I'll be one Bravo Mike Sierra. So if you hear some guy way down in the mud down there, that's probably going to be me because I'm actually going to be operating uh, QRP too. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm I'm just dying to try that. And Wayne, KG5RE, who, who normally goes to field day with us when we go out in the woods and set up, he's actually camping in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's hiking a trail out there. Yes. I wonder if he took his radio and stuff. He's you know, do field day. we've talked about that when he goes on these hikes and the radios he takes. And while I'm not a, a hiker, but apparently... It is very important to minimize your load as much as you can. Mm-hmm. So I know he's not carrying something with a big lead acid battery anyway. True. So I don't know if he was gonna. Well, I'm gonna okay. use my 705. I got a little three amp. Uh, uh, what is it? A life life po four mm-hmm. battery. I'm gonna see how long it lasts. It's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna uh, gonna kind of uh, smoke test that thing. That battery this this weekend, yeah. see how it works out. I had thought about it. I could just, uh, since I won't have time to do a lot of setup and stuff, I could just get in the mobile and go somewhere and walk right off the little tar hill. I don't know. It's uh, n- not big field day plans for me this year. I, I wish we could, but just... Didn't yeah. work out there, there's year. no way we could go back out to the site where we were. I'm sure that's just oh. a big swamp right now. No, we couldn't. We couldn't get to it right now. It's it's just been too much rain. Although I know Emil, the swamp doesn't scare him at all. I was just thinking though, he may come on up here taking that as an invitation. The swamp. <laughs> <laughs> of he course, could. you'd be welcome. You'd have trouble digging the crawdads in the red clay, though. <laughs> True. Those crawdads are nasty, the yeah. red clay ones. <laughs> okay, any other things we want to mention? Well, one is that net we have every Tuesday night. Yeah, it's a fun net. Amateur Logic Sound Check Net, like George said, it's every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central or 1 UTC until the time changes. But for now, it's at 1 UTC. Uh, it's mostly digital modes, um, Echo Link, All Star. I'm not going to read the list. You can see them all. It's pretty much all of them there. Um, it's also streamed live, same place you're watching this live stream, uh, live.amateurlogic.tv on YouTube. Uh, so if you don't check in, you can at least listen to it there. But uh, it lasts several hours, so make some time and, and come check in with us. It's a lot of fun. We've been going on for... I believe this was 62 yeah. weeks this time. This will be the 63rd coming up. Uh, it was only going to last a few weeks, and it's had such a great response. People enjoy it so much, we've just kept it going. Yep. Um, got a, a lot of volunteers helping to, to call the net. Tom, Marty, Amanda, Jeff, uh, you, Emil, Mike, and myself. I think that's everybody. Um, but anyway... And we rotate turns calling the net. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It, you know, two of the things I think make it extra fun is, number one, 
you've got all those different modes that you can operate. You know, you can try out your digital gear with a lot of different modes there. And there are even apps you can get to run on your computer or your phone now that mm-hmm. will do some of those modes as well. And you could you could test that out one week and, you know, see how that works. Just some general experimenting and checking out your gear there. And also, we ask a question mm-hmm. every net. There's a different question that's uh, chosen by whoever's going to be the net controls that week. What was this last one? I'm trying to think. It was a good question. Oh, you? yeah. What's your dream location uh, to set up a temporary station to operate from? Yeah, that was good. It had some good answers. These are some of the previous ones that we've had. Last time activity. Which voice mode has best sounding or is the best sounding to you? That was a good one. Yeah, this one was kind of interesting. Windows, Mac, or Linux. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of lot of questions. Uh, they're almost all ham related or some kind of technology stuff that's most people that check in can can kind of relate to. Throughout the month, there's a place you can catch up with us. Yeah, quite a few places actually. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash ham college and amateur logic. And you can follow us at ham college or at amateur logic on Twitter. Yep. And uh, on MeWe, we've got uh, ham college and amateur logic groups on there as well. And, and groups.io slash G slash amateur logic. And one other thing we always mention last each episode, and that's the show notes. If you wanted to find out what was in a particular show, you could find that right here. Yep, that's where we find them. Amateurlogic.tv slash wiki. And with that, I think we're done. And we can turn the air conditioner back we can, on. And we need to turn the air conditioner back on. Thanks for being here, everyone. Join us again at the end of next month for the next Ham College. And in the middle of the month, uh, a couple of weeks away, join us for the next Amateur Logic. Yeah, and on the weeks that we don't have those, what we got going on? We have an Amateur Logic short. That short videos that we're putting out on the weeks that we don't have either an Amateur Logic or an Ham College. And there's been a few good ones in there. Oh, yeah, I think they've all been really good, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, they're short videos. They're only on YouTube. So go mm-hmm. to our YouTube channel and uh, like and subscribe. Or subscribe, and if you see some of them you like, be sure to click the like uh, thumbs up on there. And they really help the, the ratings and uh, kind of helps YouTube to promote the videos to other hams. Yeah. We don't release those on the YouTube, on the uh, Roku channel or the Amazon Fire Stick channel, although you can watch them on the YouTube clients on those platforms, but they don't go through those uh, channels. So the only way you'll see them is to go subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's a lot of channel words there. It all is. One time. You were just kind of like channeling. I was channeling, channeling, I was channeling yeah. this whole thing here. Yeah, okay. Uh, but anyway, go, go uh, subscribe and, and check them out. I think you'll like them. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. And once again, thanks for being here and joining us for the next one. And happy field day, everybody. I hope you get out and have a fun time. Let us know what you did. Send us a few pictures or something. We'll have them in the next Amateur Logic. That would be Oh, good. yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. All right, and we'll probably find out what Tommy did as well. Yep, I'm sure you will. 7-3. 7-3, everybody.
let's come back in just a moment and put a wrap on this. You're going to wrap? Oh! <gasps> 